Welcome to Home Improvement Woodworking. For our regular viewers, this video will be a little different than the how-to format that you're used to, and that's because this is a special occasion. We have a contest that we're entering by the Modern Maker Podcast. This is also a one-year anniversary of our YouTube channel. Our YouTube channel started a year ago with a Modern Maker Podcast challenge using two 2x4s. And this is our contest entry. It's a height adjustable standing desk meant for a laptop. Here we are a year later with 30 videos and 4,000 subscribers and the Modern Maker Podcast has put on another challenge. That is the Rockler Plywood Challenge. In this challenge, we're to use our creativity to build anything using one sheet of plywood. Now plywood is a great material because it's dimensionally stable, it's strong, and it's flat. I'm looking for something that challenges my skill and creativity. So let me show you what I've got in mind. Here's my vision. Having a round end table with a cone-like shape on the top and then a cone-like shape on the bottom like this. I've looked at the grain on this and if I allow it to come straight it might look consistent across and I want there to be a bit of a contrast so I think I'm going to run the grain this way on this piece and this way on that piece. I made a model out of craft paper to make sure I could get all the geometry right. From there, I could trace it out and cut out my pieces. After cutting out that first piece, I secure it down to a scrap piece of wood. And what I need to do is create a center point so I can cut two arcs. I need a curve on the top and a curve on the bottom. And they need to be perfect curves for this table to work right. I use an upcutting spiral bit so I've got a nice clean cut. With the first piece cut, I can now trace the second one with a template cutting bit, and then make sure my curves are exactly the same. So let me tell you about the plan. This is the piece here that's going to make the cone. This will be the top, which will be the narrowest part, and this will be the bottom. Now what I've experimented with here is doing some kerf cuts and then gluing them together. So if I space them a half inch apart on this three quarter inch plywood, bend them together, it takes about 15 cuts to get a 90 degree angle. So to make a full circle, I've got 60 cuts to do across here. So I'm gonna space them a half inch apart at the top, and then at the bottom, they're one inch apart. So basically what I've done is taken that center point, and I've got a radius, and I'm gonna draw out the lines all the way around here, and then from there, I can cut them with my saw. The grooves in the plywood are called saw curves, and those saw curves go right down to the final layer of ply and allows the plywood to be flexible. The way I do this is my bench top panel saw. This is a panel saw I built and shown in a previous video, and what you do is put your saw inside the groove, and as you push through it, that saw blade cuts accurately every single time. Because I've got such a large curve here, I've got grain going different directions. I purposely set it up this way so I can get the grain going at a 45 degree angle. But here I've got grain that's going parallel to those kerf cuts. And over here, the grain is going perpendicular to those kerf cuts. 
So what that means is this is a lot more flexible on this side than it is on this side. Here I'm having a hard time flexing it. So what I've discovered is if I take a sharp knife and run it in these grooves, just like this, that's all it takes to get that groove as flexible as the ones at that end. Gluing up a piece like this is really challenging. When I was doing my test fits, I struggled so much to try and get straps around it. A strap around a cone just slides off. So I figured if I used a bucket, I could force the cone into something. I reached out to some people on Instagram and Freddie Roman gave me some advice that really helped. And that was strap it down and strap it around and you'll eventually get there. There's a lot of tension on this, just listen. That's the strap clamp making that sound. So I've also on the inside put some blocks and screwed them in where I've got that seam at the back just to help hold it all together. I glued it together with polyurethane glue to give it a good hard glue line on that inside edge. With the two cones put together, this is where I start to see how my vision's coming together. You can see here I've put the grain on an angle this way and the grain on this on an angle this way. And I've done that intentionally, so when I put these together, the grain is actually opposite and it really makes those two pieces look separate but balance each other out. My challenge here is there's a rocking in this joint. So what I need to do is level that out and then I can secure these together. To level out this joint, I could use a sanding block and sand down the high points, but it's not really precise and I need these to be dead accurate. So what I've done is I've taken a board and I've taped on a piece of sandpaper. And what this allows me to do is hold the piece that doesn't have sandpaper at one end and then stroke it back and forth. to sand off the high points. And that'll get me a flat surface all the way around if I keep moving that around so I can mate these two pieces. And it came together really well. My fasteners for this project are gonna be three old cone wrenches I no longer use. I'm just gonna put them in the vise here, bend them about midway, and then drill holes in them to secure the top to the bottom. It's hard to see on camera, but I've actually got a flat area here on this lip from when I was sanding. So what I'm going to use is an artist brush to spread glue, and you'll see this a lot. I use an artist brush for almost everything for spreading glue. So I'm going to spread that along here, and then I've got my cone wrenches here, which is sort of a Jimmy DeResta inspired hack to be able to put hardware to connect the two pieces. After working on those cones, cutting out this round tabletop seems really simple. With this top now cut, I can put it on, and you'll see here it's looking rather thin relative to that large base. So my plan is to take some solid edging and put it underneath, give it a chamfer, and beef up that look so it complements the base and doesn't look like it's a thin piece of wood just added on the top as an afterthought. I've got all these segments cut here, and what I'm gonna do is glue them together, but not to the table. And if you've ever seen one of these clear report covers or old overhead sheets, they used to be called foils, uh, you can put them down, and they're great for making sure that these pieces don't stick. So this ring is gonna be separate, and what I wanna do is glue it all up first, then center it where I want, and then I'll screw it in, and then I can route it and detach it to do the chamfer. With this all dried now, I've got it screwed down in four different spots, and I'm going to use my template bit 
to go around the table and get the same profile. Now you can see it's starting to come together. I've now got a top here that I think is the right mass for the body here. The last thing for me to do is edge band that piece of plywood and then this edge here, I'm either going to chamfer or put a bevel on. I just want to give it a little bit of different dimension than that front edge on the edge banding. The spoke shave wasn't working well because of the uphill and downhill on the grain. It was causing too much tear out. So I've converted over to the belt sander and put it on an angle. You can see here I've just started flattening the edge. I'm about halfway through putting the bevel on this. And you can see here, as I push this closer to the belt sander, where it's making contact. The plan is to make this one straight bevel from this edge to the bottom edge, and that should give me a nice profile on the table. Since the top is made out of plywood, I need to edge band it. And edge banding is a fairly simple process. You just need a hot iron and pre-glued edge banding. When I edge band a circle, I always leave the start loose because when I come back around, the next piece here is going to slide underneath. I'm going to cut through both to get a nice clean cut and then glue it down. To glue this on, you just need to heat up that glue and keep the edge banding centered on the workpiece. And then from there, Quickly rub it down with a block to get it to adhere. With the top assembled all together, you can see how much more mass it gives it. I'm really happy with how this turned out. It's time to get to the finish. I really enjoyed working on this project. It was something that was challenging and pushed me beyond my comfort zone. We're regularly on YouTube, and if you've got questions, we're happy to answer them. And we'd love to hear your feedback through comments. Until next time, enjoy your time in the workshop.